Hey guys, today's completely unsponsored video is dedicated to TMB Custom Models and Nick and Noor Designs. Both of those companies are owned by my friends Mike and Karen Baker. TMB Custom Models is Mike's custom model building company and Nick and Nora Designs is where he sells his kits and his detail parts. Give them a visit on their websites which is tmbcustommodels.com and nickandnoradesigns.com and their contact information is on the video. Thanks guys. Hey guys, Larry here with Creaky Chair Models. It's been about a month since I did a video and I took on a little project the other day on an off day and did a little R&D. Those of you that have watched my videos in the past will realize this is the first speedometer I built. It's, uh, it's pretty long. It's just a little over a foot long and it's big. Now, I was experimenting so I really didn't care. I've used the heck out of it. This one has toggle switches that you can use to change the scale. And whatever the last one is, it starts at H, O, S, and O. So whatever the last one is, it's lit. That's the scale it calculates at. I had a little light here that said sensor active because that's what the fellow who wrote the initial code did. Now he didn't have the switches, I added those. So since then, I've updated the code and yes, the sensor active still comes on, but it will, when it goes live, and you'll see this on the one I'm about to show you, it displays ones if it's the left and it displays twos if it's the right. It's bi-directional. It works well. I've used it on uh, several layouts, uh, a couple S gauges and uh, one O gauge and HO for testing. It sits on the bench. It gets used once in a while because I created another one that has a 20 by 4, 20 character by 4 line display. There's a video out there on that one also. But that one even is a bit big. It's six inches long just because of the nature of the beast. I was sitting around thinking, which is always a dangerous thing for me, and I said, I wonder if I can fit this into one of my little project boxes. So I'll show you what I came up with. So what led me down this path was a bag full of project boxes fell out from under the bench and this little four inch by three inch by one inch box landed on my toe now it doesn't weigh anything didn't hurt me but I said you know I think the original speedometer display will fit in there and I might be able to squeeze in a couple of uh, sensors I'll shoot a picture over of the initial layout now this one, the left sensor goes, displays ones, right sensor calculates the speed. I'll let it cycle through. It takes a few seconds for that. And this is timings all adjustable, but that gives it about time for a um, 30 scale mile an hour train with five cars to come through. So if the right one starts, well, I, I got too fast, but if the right one starts, it displays twos and does the same thing. Gives me an opportunity to explain that once you cross 70 scale miles per hour, it flashes at that rate. If you get to um, between 50 and 70, it flashes at half of that rate. So it gives you just that little verbal cue that things are wrong. So I initially put these sensors here on the top okay and you can kind of see the the um, kind of purplish color there that is actually a little trick you can use to determine whether your sensors are, are transmitting or not your cell phone camera which that's all I use for these right now I have a better camera but this one seems to do pretty well but anyway it will show you that um, if it's got that little glow there, you can tell that your sensor is transmitting. Of course, we started it, so we'll end it. But I got to thinking about it, and I said, geez, you know, this one has to lay down this way next to the track, 
Now the sensor that's in there has got about two inches of range, so it's not a big deal. But for like looking across the layout, this one's a little bit iffy, okay? So I thought it would be great to put the sensors out the back. Well, I ran into a little problem with that. So in my previous sensor video, and I'll put a link to that video up in the, uh, the screen, I talked about these sensors, which is what is being used on this one, all right? If you bend these sensors up so they would shine out the back, well, the problem you have is you can't get to this potentiometer to adjust it and you can't see the LEDs. Theoretically, you could set it up before you installed it, but there, another problem is mounting. There's not any real flat surface that you could put a bunch of Velcro on. And um, I just thought, maybe there's a different way. So I went digging through the Arduino box and I'll show you what I came up with. Oh, one more thing about this. I just installed a simple toggle switch here for on and off. Really don't like the looks of it. It works fine. It's it's a single pole double throw switch and uh, it just, it works fine, but aesthetically it's not pleasing. So what I'm going to do, and I've got them on order through Amazon, is um, I put a little, I ordered some slide switches that will mount over here on the side and it won't be quite as obtrusive. So after a little playing, I'll show you what I came up with. Okay, so this is what I came up with by digging through the Arduino sensor box. So I keep my parts relatively segregated so I can find them. And I did some tests on these sensors. And the ones that were in the first one have a range of two and a half, three inches. And if you put light pipes on them, you can get them up to six inches. So I thought, well, that's good. And I found these, and I remembered, I'm pretty sure I did a, a test on these. If not, I know Tom Kovichak did. Now, if you notice, this one's got a bright blue here. That's the transmitter on this one. So um, you can, again, use that for testing. But this is the sensors I found. Now, these sensors are mounted on the back of the board. So it was simple to just cut a small hole and... The board is mounted on Velcro in case I ever need to change it. If I screw up, get paint on it or whatever, it's a, it's a quick change. Um, but at any rate, the adjustment and the pots for them being active are on the front of the board. So it was quite simple to set them up. The range on this one is an inch to an inch and a half. Um, if you notice, the sensor sizes are much smaller. These are three millimeters. The other ones were five millimeters. I did not install the power switch on this yet. I will do that at some point, but right now it's because we were pointing at sensors, of course, it went through a time cycle. I um, bought the project box on Amazon. I will put links to everything in here. It is really, there's five components. There's a display. There's my standard voltage regulator with a, um, bridge rectifier on it. There's the two sensor boards and there's an Arduino Nano. And I have a picture I will put like in the upper window or something of the initial layout on these. This is a beta unit and it works okay for certain things. The one thing I didn't think about was this is just about two inches high which is a little bit high for most HO stuff. I'm gonna flip the board over and mount these so they're down here, and that way they'll be slightly above track level. And um, usually in my layout, this sits on another piece of track. So that's how it, I'm gonna do it. Uh, the other thing I'm leaning toward, and I don't know if I'll do it or not, this works very well and it would just be purely aesthetics. But I have these 16 by two displays and that's 16 characters by two rows that I could make this a little more verbose like my other speedometer and get you know that little bit of quality difference. So that's the update on that project. 
I hope you enjoyed it. If you want the code, and um, the code will give you the wiring diagram. It's quite simple. And my other videos will show you how to adjust these sensors and do all that. Um, but if you want it, just get a hold of me on my website, creakychairmodels.com. That's C-R-E-A-K-Y-C-H-A-I-R-M-O-D-E-L-S.com. All of my contact information is there. My phone number, my um, email, everything. So I'll also put a link to the website here in the, in the show notes. I hope you guys got something out of this. It was a fun little project, and when it's finally done... It will be being used a lot. I'm actually going to keep it in my, in my um, toolbox and just carry it with me. As for power, by the way, it runs off a 9-volt battery, which you saw the connector. Um, it runs off 6.5 to 30 volts DC or DCC track power. So what I've done for DC and DCC is I took another one of these, and because it's not polarity sensitive, I just plug it in and I have alligator clips on it made it simple. Um, there is not enough room for a battery inside of this. This box is a little small for that. But it's still compact and it works well. Again, thanks a lot guys. Have a great weekend and a safe weekend.